Coming up in today's video, I show you how I pay my Empress Miniatures British Airborne. This tutorial will show in detail each step I take to paint my miniature and explain how to achieve a realistic Denison smock pattern. If you haven't checked out the new Kickstarter being run by Empress Miniatures, watch until the end of the video as all will be explained. Leave a comment below if you enjoyed this tutorial and if you want to see more of these amazing airborne figures. Alright guys, so let's get straight into painting this British Airborne figure from the Arnhem Heroes Kickstarter that's being run by Empress Miniatures and Paul Hicks. If you haven't seen any of the models uh, or you're completely oblivious to all of this, I've left some links in the description. I've also got videos on it. If you go to Empress Miniatures Facebook page, you'll see tons of promotional photos as well. So to start off with the smock, I'm going to be painting it in middle stone. So I'm using AK. I find the AK one um, is almost perfect for what I need. Now obviously it's going to be different interpretations of middle stone uh, throughout the different companies, but they should all be about the same and they should all work nicely for this as well. Now I'm using English uniform for his trousers. The name says it already, <laughs> English uniform. And it is a pretty good color for it. So we'll use this English uniform from Vallejo for his trousers. And you can see in this photo here, the, the, the trousers are quite brown. Obviously they would have been quite worn by this point as well. So they'd be a little bit darker potentially, uh, just obviously depending on where they've been and what they've been up to. So to paint the jacket camo stripes, I'm using retractive green as my green color. Now you can see I'm letting the brush do the work. Now what do I mean by that? I mean I'm not smothering the brush on the model um, or putting it in heavy coats. So I'm doing light coats and I'm trying to make the brush, the ends of the brush do the work. So leaving like little paintbrush marks. Um, if you look at the smock, especially the Mark 1, um, that was painted on just a big paintbrush, but the Mark 2 is, is similar uh, when we're talking about the Denison smock. So try and use like as if it's a big paintbrush, um, obviously scaled down to 28 mil. So I'm trying to show this in the video and I'm just using straight little lines, but also nice big curves as well. So they do overlap. Unfortunately, when you're talking about this scale, unless you're using really bright colors, the overlapping of the brown and the green isn't gonna look as nice as it should do. So I try and overlap it in parts, but I try where I can to leave some of that middle stone popping through because I wanna differentiate between the brown and the green uh, just to make it really stand out a bit more. And hopefully you'll agree that the actual Denison smock that I've just shown uh, in the video and my interpretation of it is almost identical in terms of the color choices or at least that's what I think anyway. So once you've done that he's got a part of the smock that is just where his sleeves are so I'm just painting that in khaki. The officers and um, jackets I believe were slightly different I think they're a bit padded um, up around the neck as well as this the uh, ends of the sleeves so I'm just painting them in I'm just again being quite generous there because we're gonna go over it with a wash and this is what I'm gonna be doing here so this wash is umbar wash from Vallejo and I'm putting it into a palette. the reason I'm gonna do that is because I want to water this down so I'm adding water from um, just you know where I clean my brush and I'm just trying to get the consistency down so it's not as harsh umbar wash dries in a quite dirty brown um, so if we can water that down a bit more it actually turns into more of a glaze than a wash um, but it, the wash part of that will stay there in the deeper um, bits of detail so these models are fantastic in terms of they have full of detail and the wash really does do a lot of work. So to paint the airborne beret, I'm using wine red from AK Interactive. Now it does look very red in this shot and obviously bright red is not what you want to go for when we're talking about the airborne. We're talking maroon uh, berets here. So wine red dries nicely 
uh, in a more of a maroon color and after we put a wash on that that will really scale that brightness down as well so don't be worried we can get that color down now finally to complete the uniform I'm actually giving it a dry brush of khaki the reason I'm doing that is because where it's starting to wear and uh, parts of those camo strips are going to start to fade out where the creases are so I'm being quite light as you can see there's hardly any paint on that brush but where there is paint it's just capturing those raised edges so don't go mental with that brush uh, uh, sorry dry brush so now for the webbing I'm using Russian uniform World War II again you can be quite generous with this process you can just sort of paint it all on um, obviously making sure you're getting rid of that light grey that's going to be showing um, and if you make a few mistakes that's okay we can touch it all up before we get to the real detailed part of this tutorial so for any of the wooden objects that your models are going to have I'm going to be using flat earth for this now you can go with a darker brown and start uh, bringing it down a touch in, in colour but I think flat earth works really well if we're looking at the reference photo of this Sten here and you can see that this Sten has a wooden pistol grip, a wooden foregrip and also a wooden stock so we want to make sure we capture that. This officer also has a pistol so I'm painting the handle of the pistol in that colour. Now for the metallic colour I'm using German grey. The reason I'm using German grey and not straight up silver is because if you look at any Second World War sort of submachine gun, they're all of, of like a darker black or grey, uh, metallic grey. They're not a bright silver straight from the factory, nice and polished. These are a black sort of looking weapons. So obviously we don't want to paint it black because you just won't see any of the details. So we go for German grey and then we wash it and then we start putting details on so the British Airborne used camo scarves um, it's an iconic part of their uniform so to do that we're using Italian tank crew from Vallejo for our initial base coat we will brighten this right up uh, towards the end but initially I'm going to use this Italian tank crew paint now he's got binoculars so to paint those binocular straps I'm using German camo medium brown. If you're painting his binoculars as well you can just use the German grey that we used for the metallic uh, weapons or objects. So now we've done all of that it's time to wash all of that stuff. So I'm using unbar wash and I'm washing the webbing, I'm washing um, any of the wooden parts of the objects. If I hadn't washed the trousers at this point I'd be washing those too but we've already done that. Um, and also the binocular straps I'll be washing those his scarf that also gets a wash and it's not diluted it's just straight out of the, the tub now he's got little buttons on this smock so I'm using German camo black brown and I'm just painting little dots over the top of the details on there fortunately for us the guys at Empress have done a fantastic job and Paul Hicks in sculpting these and he's given those buttons to work with so once that black brown's down, I'm using brass from Vallejo and I'm just dabbing them on. If you put a bit too much on, you can just pour a wash over the top of them. You won't really notice it after that. Now for the metallic objects and his binoculars, I'm going to be using No Oil from Citadel. I also painted his boots in German grey, so I'll be giving them a wash of that as well. Try to avoid the wooden parts of the Sten here, so the, the grips and the stock, um, because you've already washed that in a brown wash. I'm also going to be washing the beret in black. So black's quite a harsh wash, but it gets the job done. And then now your model is ready for the tabletop if this is how you want to leave. If you want a very quick job, you just need to paint his flesh and bosh, you're done. Uh, but you know me, I want to take this a lot further. So we go with the first layer of highlights. So we're going for wash, Russian uniform World War II and we're going back over the webbing. This time we're capturing the detail. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this because we've already discussed it uh, in previous videos. But we're just making sure we're capturing all the detail that can be seen, all the raised edges, etc. So again, we're going back over the trousers in English uniform and repeating the exact same process. 
So just making sure all that dark color is staying in the creases and all the bright color is hitting where the detail is. Going over the wood with flat earth just to make it pop, leaving some of that darker brown that we've got there underneath. You can paint in straight lines as well to sort of stim uh, simulate uh, wood grains or something like that. Now for the sleeves of his jacket, we're using khaki going back over it. Again, this model is very well is very well detailed. Sorry about that. So you can pick out the details nicely there as well. Then for the beret, I'm going over it in wine red once more. Not going too heavy with this. I've sort of washed it down a bit as well, just because I want to give it a bit more of a maroon look if I can. Now going back over the stent with German grey and I'm picking out the details here, uh, making sure there's separation between where the mag would go, uh, any sort of details where the iron sights are, uh, any of that good stuff. And then to finish the beret, I'm using black and that is just to get the band of the beret. So where the beret meets the head, I'm painting that band that's detailed on the model in black. Also making sure that I paint his airborne symbol on the beret in black as well before I put a touch of silver over the top of that. And that is the first round of highlights complete. So this is what it looks like. Again, this would be perfect to use on the tabletop, but let's take it another step further. So to give our Sten a final highlight, I'm using base lead belcher from Citadel. And I'm sort of doing what I like to call as a precision dry brush. And what I mean by that is I'm using a smaller brush with very little paint on it. And I'm just doing little bits at a time, making sure that I can get the details that I need without smothering it in silver and making it look unrealistic. Now I'm hitting that airborne symbol on his beret as well with silver. I'm just doing three little dots. To highlight the wood, I'm using new wood. If you look at British weapons, so the Lee Enfield, the Sten gun uh, with the wooden grip, the brand, it's all quite of a kind of a bright wood color. Well, from the references I've seen anyway. So new wood is good for that and I'm just painting in like little lines and such just to get that wood grain effect. Just to highlight the binoculars, I'm using Basil Grey from Vallejo and I'm just making sure that I'm capturing the details. So any of the raised edges, whatever details that you can see on that set of binoculars. And then for the strap, for the binoculars, I'm using orange brown. Orange brown is really great for a worn leather look. Um, so matching the medium brown and the orange brown together really work nicely. And to highlight the webbing further, we use Russian uniform and Iraqi sand at a one to one ratio. So just pick out the details here, but don't go too crazy. You just want to pick out small details using a, a finer brush. And as you can see there, the details already there for you. So you don't really have to do much extra work in trying to create details that might not be there. Don't put too much paint on your brush, just take your time um, and it's a technique that will come to you eventually, just plenty of um, tries and you'll get there. And then to do the final highlight of the trousers I'm using khaki grey. Just picking out the details here, he's got a pocket for his trousers so you can make a little bit more detail with your highlight which will sort of show that perhaps he's got an object in the in that pocket um, so highlighting is really good for that adding little details just to trick the eye into believing that there might be a bit more there than there actually is then to highlight and to make that scarf pop out i'm using german camo bright green um, and again this is more of a dry brush than a, a paint on albeit um, i am painting it on but with a very small amount of paint and then for a final highlight of that badge on his beret I'm using a bright silver I can't remember who made this silver um, but it's bright just to make it really pop and you can see there's just three dots there now I'm doing a pin wash just because I wanted to tidy up any mistakes that might have been made when I was doing that dry brush so I'm using a pin wash of null oil which is black 
and just getting those bits of details to pop and the separation between different areas of the stain gun. Now I'm moving on to the flesh and I'm using reddish black from AK as the base coat. Um, obviously this might actually make for a good colour for the beret as well, uh, but it's probably a bit too uh, dark and red for what I need anyway. Now I don't paint eyes, um, so if you want to look at a much better uh, flesh tutorial, there's plenty out there. My flesh uh, tutorials are, are rather basic compared to them, purely because um, I just don't, I just can't do it. <laughs> That's the truth of it. I'm not a big fan of eyes on 28 mil. There's some people that can really pull it off, others that can't, um, and unfortunately I'm in the boat that can't. Um, so I'm just going to go with what works well for me and that's all you need to do you know you just master what works well for you and you can take it from there when you're painting flesh it's always good to water down your paint as well so obviously don't coat your brush in water but just water it down a touch and blend it all together so there'll be areas of his face that are going to be darker or hand that are going to be darker and lighter so for a face you're talking about the top of um, like his nose his cheeks uh, chin sort of top of his eyebrow area you want to make that a bit brighter and then towards the back end of his face where it meets the ears that can be a little bit darker the tips of the ears can be brighter the inner ear needs to be a bit red if you can or redder so to finish it off i'm using light flesh and i'm just painting little lines where sort of like veins or muscles of the hand would be um, and i'm just going to blend it all in eventually i might do a better flesh tutorial if people want to see a better one um, but like I said there are so many out there on YouTube and far better than what I'm showing you now um, so yeah don't hesitate to criticize my flesh I'm just uh, pre-warning you that um, it's probably not as good as what others could do so to do his facial hair and hair I'm using German camo black brown so this particular model was based off a captain um, and I'll show a picture of that towards the end. And from the photos I've seen, he had dark hair. So I'm using a dark mustache and dark hair for that. So to highlight that mustache, I'm using German camo medium brown, and I'll be using the same for the hair. Any type of brown, really. You can also add another layer of brown if you wanted to, to really make it pop, um, which I might do later on. But for the sake of this video, I'm probably just gonna stick with that color. And then one final little thing I like to do with these bigger models, so I don't do this with my 20mm, I don't do this with my 15mm, but with my 28mm I go back over with a pin wash of Umbar wash just to make sure that I've got all the details I need captured and all the creases showing nicely. Okay, so there we go. Here are the four finished models. So I really am pleased with how the Denison smock has turned out. I think it looks really good in this scale, um, even better than my 20 mil that I did. Let me know below how you thought um, the Denison smock part of this came out. Uh, did you like it? Will you be using it? Um, but like I said at the start, if you haven't seen the Arnhem Heroes Kickstarter, I would really, really, really recommend you go and check it out. They are gonna be so awesome. So I don't normally paint in 28 mil. I normally paint in 20 mil. Uh, but they're just such great sculpts and Paul Hicks and the guys at Empress have done such an amazing job. Now the Kickstarter um, is live, it's going, I've put the link in the description. If you're like me, I'm just going to go straight for the full Monty deal. So it's deals one, two and three, it's all £119, never mind the postage, they can charge whatever they want. Even though I'm in Australia, they just look too good, I need them. Um, so. Get around it guys, even if you just go for deal one, which is 33 pounds, that's 16 metal British Airborne figures, enough for a platoon and command with an additional special figure. So really go check that out. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys are gonna be partaking in this. Let me know how you found this video. If you're new here, please like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. Click that bell button for future tutorials um, and yeah, I really appreciate all the support guys and I will catch you at the next one. Thanks.